Hi, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to learn how to do supervised classification and we are going to use the maximum likelihood algorithm. We are going to use the Sentinel-2 image which has spatial resolution of 10 meters. So guys, let's do this. The first thing that you need to do is to ensure that the spatial analyst extension is on. So you go to extension and you ensure that there is a tick on the spatial analyst extension. Then you right click and you click on the image classification. This is going to help you in the classification process. Then you click on the training sample manager. It's going to help you in your drawing of the training areas. You can use polygons or rectangles or circles. This depends on what you prefer. So for me, I prefer the rectangles. Now you need to zoom in into the image and start drawing your training areas. So in this particular video, I'm going to create four classes and I'm going to start with the forest area. So this particular dark green area represents the forest area. So I'm going to draw the rectangles and I'm going to look for areas in the image which have similar characteristics and then draw the rectangles. You need to ensure that your training areas are distributed all over the image so that the classification becomes even more accurate and you can add as many training areas as you want it's even better when you have as many you can have as many as 50 to 75 or even 100 points per class that makes the classification process even more accurate so i'm going to do that i just keep looking for areas that have similar characteristics and then create more rectangles create more training areas you need to ensure that they're all distributed around the image so that they're not concentrated in one area so here yeah, you just keep adding the rectangles all over the map and in this video i'm going to use about 10 to 15 points but in your analysis, you need to use more than that. This is just to show you the process of doing this particular classification method. So that area, you can see it's a hill area and it has some forest on it. So you create more rectangles. Then after you're done creating your training areas for a particular class, you need to select your training areas. You can do that by clicking you press control button and then you select them all and then you click on the merge training samples and you can rename it so this is going to be forest class if you need to put another color you can change the color now you need to start creating training areas for another class so you're going to train for the urban area so this particular image it's of an area that's around a city so there are many urban areas so you just move around the image create rectangles around the urban areas as i said before ensure that your training areas are distributed all over the map so you create as many rectangles that you can So supervised classification, it's an easy way to do your classification and it takes less time compared to unsupervised. But obviously it has its disadvantages also, like uh, we're human beings so you can make errors when you're doing your class classifications because sometimes you might think an area is maybe urban and it's not so that's some of these disadvantages that you can get when doing this type of classification so now we are done creating the sample areas for the urban area now we need to match them all into one like we did for the forest areas so you can see i'm not using many sample areas because this is just a demonstration of how you're supposed to do your classification if you're doing the supervised but you need to use many points definitely more than what i'm using then you can change the color 
Now we move to the next land cover class that is the agricultural area. Now this area, this image, it's for an area that people are growing many crops. Like this area here, people are growing tea and coffee. So this light green here, it shows the cropland areas. So we are going to create many triangles just around this area to show the cropland areas. Another thing is that sometimes the cropland areas might look like bare land because you can find it's a farm and the crops are not, they're not, I mean, they, they haven't grown yet but it's a cropland area. So you might confuse it with a bare land area. So if you're not sure about it, you can use the Google Earth. You can go and check your location and check what's there in that location. And something else with cropland areas, you can be able to identify them using patterns. Cropland areas always have patterns. They always patterns in which farmers plant their crops. So you can just know the cropland areas using patterns and as we all know in remote sensing we have ways of interpreting data there are various te techniques you can use sizes you can use shapes like for rivers you can usually see the meanders and so the same thing with the cropland you can use the pattern you can be able to always identify the pattern in a cropland area so you just keep adding the triangle no sorry the rectangles until you get to a point where you feel like you've covered most of the image, then you need to merge them. So you select all of them and then you merge. So that's what you're basically going to do in all your classes. The number of classes that you decide to do, you, you're going to do this for every single class. You merge and then you rename. So this is going to be the agricultural area. And if you want, you can always change the color. Then lastly, we're going to create training areas for the water areas. We just have two locations here. And this one here, it's a lake. So we're going to draw the rectangle here. Then there's another small one down there. Also draw another rectangle. So for the water areas, we're just going to have those. Then again, we're going to merge them into one and then we're going to rename them just like we did for the other classes. So this just shows you how to create the training areas. In the next part, I'm going to show you what to do after you're done creating the training areas. Thanks, guys.